Hello, welcome to module 23 of NPTEL NOC course on Point Set Topology Part 2. So, we started with the Stone Weistrass theorems. Yesterday, we have proved uh, Weistrass approximation theorem and prepared partly some ground for Stone Weistrass theorem. So, today we will continue. So, we will need one more concept which so far we have not introduced. We will introduce this concept only for directly applying it to here in this context. So, we are not going to treat this uh, on its own in general context. Okay. So, this is the, the concept of a lattice. Okay, a subalgebra A of C X R is called a lattice if it satisfies the following condition. Given any two elements inside A, the maximum of F and G must be also inside A. Remember, maximum of any two continuous functions is again a continuous function first of all. So, it is an element of C X R. What we want is starting with f and g inside a, the maximum must be also inside a. Similarly, minimum must be also inside a. So, then we call it a lattice. In particular, what happens if you take instead of just two elements, suppose you take finitely many of them, then also maximum and minimum are defined and they will be also there by induction. You can f1, f2, first you take the maximum f1, f2, f3 maximum will be same thing as maximum of n, f, f1, f2 and f3 and so on. So, you can apply that. So, finitely many uh, elements of A, then the maximum and minimum will be also inside A. So, that is the meaning of a lattice. Okay? So, so, let us uh, continue this study. Let A be a closed subalgebra. This concept you have already introduced earlier, a closed subalgebra of CXR, then it is a lattice. Therefore, this CS comes to us uh, free of charge. We want closed subalgebra after all, so it is automatically a lattice. So, it is only in the in the property of closed subalgebra, in addition property of closed subalgebra, that is what we are going to exploit here now. That is the content of this lemma. So, first let us say that a closed subalgebra is a lattice. So, that is one line proof here because maximum of f and g can be written as because they are real world functions after all then only maximum minimum etc makes sense. Okay? So, f plus g plus f minus g modulus divided by 2. Minimum of f g is the same thing f plus g minus f minus g divided by 2. Okay? So, you take modulus of minus f minus g of course. So, this you must have seen in many other uh, places like in measure theory and so on. So, if you have not seen it, spend some time and verify that these two are correct formulas. Okay? So, if f if f and g are inside A, A is a algebra, right? Therefore, f plus g is there. So, f plus g is there. f minus g is also there. The modulus is there. Why? That is what we have proved earlier. There we have used to close subalgebra. Okay? Using Weistrass theorem, we have proved that if, if some function is there, then its closure is also, its, its modulus is also there provided the algebra is a closed subalgebra. Okay. Therefore, f minus g is there, modulus of f minus g is there, the sum total is there, divided by 2 is also there. Similarly, minimum is also there. So, a closed subalgebra is a lattice, is a easy consequence of what? Weistrass theorem has been used here. Namely, once f is there, mod f is there. Okay? Let us go ahead now. Now, we want to, uh, last time we have introduced this uh, algebra r cross r. 
and we studied all possible algebras of r cross r so now we are going to exploit that for each x comma y inside x cross x let us make this notation a x y is all ordered pairs h x h y of real numbers okay this is subset of r2 now where h range is over this uh, curly a where curly a is the closed sub algebra that we are study okay so this is subspace of r2 indeed it is a vector subspace is easy to it is see okay indeed it is a sub algebra if a is an algebra it follows that axy is a sub algebra of r2 okay why because if you multiply this how do you multiply you have to multiply hx1 hx uh, h1 x h1 y h2 x h2 y right how do you multiply h1 h2 of x and h1 h2 y so that is the multiplication of two functions inside uh, this algebra a also so it will be h1 h2 of x and h1 h2 of y so similar way addition scalar multiplication all these things you can check so this a x y for each point x y you should drop down to just a sub algebra of r2 so what is happening here will tell you the entire story a complete control over a that is the beauty of this approach here okay according to this lemma that we have uh, studied last time a x y being a sub algebra of a is equal to one of these five zero r cross zero or zero cross r or the diagonal or the whole of r r two all right so let us go ahead now let us put a prime equal to all those f inside cxr such that when you take fx it is a condition f okay fx fy this ordered pair is inside axy so this should be true for all xy inside x cross r this condition on f okay suppose f is already inside a then this is automatic right because the definition of axy itself is that one okay so a prime automatically contains a so this a prime looks like a fattening of a something larger than a, a right so we have taken this a prime so automatically it contains a okay this curly a the following lemma is just an alternative description of what is this a prime okay so here we are bringing the point separation separation or separates points uh, that property in an of in a in a strange way you have to just watch it out okay so first of all i will give you an alternate description of this what is this one an element f inside c x r is inside a prime if and only if for every x comma y there exists a g x y inside a such that f x f y is equal to g x y x g x y y If this G is inside A, okay. Given any two point, there is a function G, okay. G x y of that is equal to f x, and G x y of y is equal to f y. This is a strong way of separation points. See, okay. X and y are two different things. For example, two different points, especially. Then you could have chosen this. Function f x f y, some function which has the property that f x and f y are different, then g x y of x and g x y of y will be different, right? So in some way this is trying to encode the se separation property of A. So this g x y must be inside A, okay? But just don't bother about that one. Just check that this definition. this description fits this definition okay take an element f it is inside a prime means what fx fy is inside axy what is axy axy's are nothing but 
from G X G Y where G is an element of A and that G I am calling it as G X Y because it depends upon X and Y for different X and Y it could be different G's that is why G X Y so so this description is obvious okay so now here is a picture of the same property that I have told that so function f is inside a prime means what this function is f here okay some continuous function take any two points a1 b1 a2 b2 a3 b3 whatever any three any two points pair of points look at f of a1 and f of b1 it can be captured by a function g a1 b1 this is an element of a now f is an element i don't know f is just a element in the larger uh, algebra cx cxr right this is an element of a and it has a property at b1 it is f b1 at a1 it is f a1 so that is the meaning of it similarly a to b2 there will be another g but both g i these g's are inside a so that is the meaning of capture it so somehow you know if you choose a lot of points you will get lot of these things they will keep you know some combination of that will give you very you know will give you the function you know all the the given function okay in approximate way that is the whole idea okay like all approximations like uh, newton's approximations and so on you choose lot of points and then you choose something going through them and that is an approximation for the function okay so that is bringing that is coming here now in an off score way we, in a very simple way in a, in a you know without uh, no, our uh, noticing at all all that you have to do is study the sub, uh, sub algebra of r2 okay so you will see that how how to do this one okay now clearly i told you a is continuous a prime the crucial topological result which we reverse the intuition namely let a be a closed subspace of cxr and a lattice in particular if it is closed subalgebra right then these two conditions are satisfied then this a prime is contained inside a in other words these two are equal okay so this is the crucial thing here and here so you have to do a little little more uh, combinatorial topology here okay let us see how you show that every element of a prime is inside a let f be inside a prime given epsilon positive we shall show that there exists a g belonging to a such that norm of f minus g is less than epsilon what does the meaning what does this mean this means that f is approximated by functions from a that means f is inside a bar but a bar is a because we start with closed subspace okay so this is our idea how to construct this g such that g is inside a so for each x y inside x fix a g x y as in lemma 5.32 okay this this is what this is what uh, we have seen for each x y there is a g x y because f is an element of a prime all right so fix g x y as in this lemma now put u x y equal to all z inside a such that f z is less than g x y z plus epsilon okay so this is the left ray v x y is the right ray z belonging to x such that f z is bigger than g x y minus epsilon okay these two rays are around g x y z one is g x y z plus and from minus infinity plus and this one is from g x y z minus epsilon to plus infinity so these two two rays are i have taken 
of course i have taken the inverse image all z inside z inside i such that fz is inside this ray which means it is the inverse image of uh, the ray under f so this is uxy and vxy these are open subsets obviously note that x comma y is both inside uxy as well as vxy okay in particular why we are why we are saying fx fx here is gxy x so fx is less than gxy plus epsilon similarly fy of gxy plus epsilon so x and y have this property so they are both inside uxy as well as vxy in particular if you fix y okay and vary x because i have taken all the x so uxy will be a cover for x similarly i can fix uh, x and vary y also okay so i will get another cover but x is what compact of dark space compactness allows you to take finite cover so you get u x1 u x2 u x n so you have x k i have put here okay all suffix uh, further suffix y is there x1 y x2 y x3 y and so on okay so this is a finite sub cover of this one okay now you have finitely many g x i y s here correspondingly right you can take the maximum of g x y z as i range from 1 up to k okay that is my g y the maximum of g x y z is g y So that is inside that. All these G X Y Ys, they are elements of A. Therefore, the maximum is inside A because A is a lattice. Okay. So what happens to G Y? It follows G Y is at A and F is less than G Y plus epsilon on the whole of X because F is less than each G X Y Y and this is maximum. Okay, so it is true for all x, for all of them. So f is less than g y plus epsilon on the whole of x. On the other hand, if you go for the other part, f is bigger than g y minus epsilon only on the intersection. If all of them, if if it's if it is uh, bigger than, is bigger than. all of them then on the fz will be bigger than the maximum right so therefore it should be true for all the i i equal to 1 to 3 up to k which means that i have to take the intersection if i take intersection of v y s v x i y i s here correspondingly i am calling it as v y on this intersection in a small set f is bigger than g y minus epsilon okay is that clear once this is the case i can do the same thing for now over y now you know fixing x okay so once you have what is these vy's for each y vy is a neighborhood of y so they cover the whole of x as y range over x right therefore i can get a Finite sub cover of this one now, v y one, v y two, v y l same. Okay, now for each v y one, v y two, I have g v g y i here, right? So I take the minimum of g y is now. So I am first maximum and then minimum. Okay, minimum of g z is is uh, g z. Which is G Y one, G Y two, G Y L minimum of them. Okay, so this minimum is again a point of A because G Y one, G Y two, G Y L are inside A, and A is a lattice. Now what happens? F is bigger than G minus epsilon the whole of X now because F is bigger than each of them. It will be bigger than minimum of course, so it will be valid for the entire of X. 
big on x it will be in one of these so it will be bigger than one of them so it is bigger than minimum similar to similar argument as this one okay so it follows that combine this one now f is less than g y on the whole of x g y plus epsilon here g y minus epsilon okay therefore norm of f minus g is strictly less than epsilon now on the whole of x combining these two things so the proof is over okay so it's like a minimax principle here <laughs> okay compactness is heavily used compactness of the domain space okay so now let us complete the proof of real version of stone wise graph let x be a compact Hausdorff space a be a closed subalgebra of cxr which separates points and contains a non zero constant then a is the entire cxr contains a non zero constant is the same thing as contains the subalgebra r itself you know the real number they as by constant functions that is subalgebra of a always okay so that is the assumption here so a must be there it is possible that the subalgebra may not have any other non zero it will be there any other non zero constant may not be there even if one non zero constant is there the entire r will be there okay so this is the standard version of stone wise trust theorem what we are going to do is a slight modification of this one a slightly stronger and this is due to gaddy it is not very old 2016 okay without any extra effort we are going to prove this one so i have put this one so let x be a compact Hausdorff space a be a closed subalgebra of cxr which separates point i am not assuming that it contains non zero constant okay that is not i am not assuming. so i have two different conclusions here then a is cxr or or what are equal to the maximal ideal mx not set of all f belongs to cxr which vanish at x not for a unique point x not in x okay so indeed this part is much more you know elaborate much more uh, revealing what is happening in the algebra then just uh, studying that it is cxr under the assumption that there is there is non zero constant let us take this one for granted then the standard version follows automatically because as soon as there are non zero constants it cannot be this one that's all right If there is a non zero constant that will not be equal to zero you see so right so mx not is much smaller after all all those only which which vanish at a, at a point the constant function non zero constant function will not vanish at any point so so this part will not occur so it will be always cxr under the assumption this one so what should have happened if assume that there are no non zero constants then we must be able to conclude that this a is nothing but mx not namely we must find out some x not exactly one point will be there it's like uh, a contraction mapping there is only one point such that fx not all the functions will vanish at that point okay and a will be precisely equal to that so this is a ideal because if f is such thing then if you take any g inside cxr g into f will also vanish that is the meaning of it's an ideal it's a maximal ideal because the moment you take anything which is not zero at x not you can produce a non zero constant 
once you do that it will be the identity element will be there so it will be the whole of the cxr okay so let us uh, go towards this one the proof of proof gives a complete picture of stone weierstrass adoption stone's adoption of weierstrass theorem of course this uses weierstrass theorem just to show that mod f is there as soon as f is there okay if x is a single term there is nothing to prove what is cxr it is just r okay so any subalgebra of r is either zero or the whole of r so uh, there is nothing to prove so there is no problem so we assume that x has more than one point Okay, by lemma five point thirty one, we know that A is a lattice. So, in order to exploit this lemma five point thirty three, namely the classification of of uh, subalgebras of R cross R into five classes, we have to pay attention to the hypothesis A separates points. Okay, namely we have to come down to this A X Y as I have explained. So that is the only thing that's left out. We have done all other preparation. So let us do that. Let us first make some observations. All these, okay, inside R two now. Given x y belong to x cross x, we know that a x y is a subalgebra of R two, and hence we can apply this lemma and. we know what axy is either zero or r cross zero or zero cross r or the diagonal or the whole of it. further axy if it is sub of r cross zero what does it mean what do you remember what is it this fx fy that means fy is all the time zero inside a as soon as a is inside f fy is zero what does it mean that a must be inside my Remember the definition of MY. If you have in here itself, I have taken this definition. MY is all F such that FY is zero. That is another uh, ideal. Okay, all all MX where for X is a point of it. That is a uh, maximal ideal. All all of them. So this contains MY. Similarly, if AXY is zero from R. That means f x f y f x is zero for all x. That means again a is inside m x. Okay. Now the, the, the second observation is for all x means or x a x x. That means what f x f x. So that is already diagonal. So it is the entire diagonal or zero. Okay. So all these are elementary observations, but Finally, you put all of them together, you have a wonderful result. If finally A separates points, then there is at most one x such that A is contained inside M x. See, A separates points. Okay, suppose there are two points such that A is contained in M x, A is contained in M y. What does that mean? All the elements of A vanish at both x and y, so x and y cannot be separated. That's all. So the uniqueness part comes only by a separate points automatically. Okay. So now consider the case when a x not x not is zero. As we have observed, a x x is always zero or delta r, right? Suppose for some x not, I don't know whether it is there or not. Suppose that that case occurs, a x not x not is zero. Okay. Automatically, it implies that f x not for all f inside A is zero, right? In this case, m x not is contained inside A is the claim. A is contained inside m x not is obvious, right? If you show m x not is contained inside A, that would mean they are equal, and we have done. We have finished. Uniqueness part we have already shown here, so we have we would have put part two here, conclusion in the part two of the theorem, 
right so let us prove that in this case mx not is inside a okay so this is achieved by showing that mx not is inside a prime okay from a above we get a is inside mx not this we have seen since a separates point from c we get a x x for any other x huh? if for the delta r it cannot be zero so it must be the delta r as soon as x is not equal to x not also from b b says that for all x a x is either zero or delta r right so also from b we get a x x not now is r cross zero because if this were zero that would have means a x x is also zero so a x x for x not equal to r delta r means a x not must be r cross zero okay and a x not x means zero cross r there is no other way right for all x not equal to x not so finally from c again we also see that a x y whenever x is not equal to x not y is not equal to y not why these these are different from x not that's all then it must be the whole of r2 right right because there are distinct points so fx fy there will be some f for fx fy will be different fx 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 fy are if are equal for all of them then no need to would have been delta r so delta r is not possible this is not possible so it must be the whole of r2 for all x y for x is not equal to x not and y is equal to not one single point has this property rest of them should have this satisfy this one this is what we have concluded okay now let us look at f belonging to mx not i want to show that it is inside a right if xy axy is r2 then clearly fx fy will be inside axy because everything everything in r2 is taken care right so it's the full thing so fx fy is in axy if x is x not or y is y not one of them since fx not is zero then also we see that fx fx not is in the axy So f x not f x not a x x not the other way around. If we interchange them, then it will be from a x not x. Otherwise, it is in that one. If a x x is delta r the diagonal, then also we see that f x f x is in the delta r, so it is a x x. And finally, if f x not f x not, if you look at that is zero zero, so that is also in the f x not. So what we have concluded is. This f is inside a prime. This was the criteria for each x. It must be inside f x y. This is the criteria. This was the description of a, a prime. So it's in a prime. Thus, we have shown that m x not is inside a prime. Okay. Now, consider the case where a x x is not equal to zero. for any x we just finish the proof for when a, a there is one x not for which x not a x not x not is zero okay that's one uh, first assumption now we are in the assumption that a x is never zero okay for any x then what is the choice it must be delta r okay by the way this condition is satisfied if a contains non zero constants you see then a x x will never be zero right there is a constant term even it will not be zero non zero constant so this is just in passing we are telling when this will satisfy the case case one does not occur if if this uh, if a contains a, a non zero constant that's all so here we claim that this cxr itself is contained inside a prime okay thereby proving that this a must be the whole of cxr okay so what how do you show that cxr all the elements are inside a prime now so so once we have done that one 
So now look at A, condition A, again I will just recall this property. A x y is r cross 0 inside A is in m y. Similarly, x y is in 0 cross A is in m x. That is all I am using here. Okay. So from A it follows that for every x y, pair x y in x cross x, A x y is either r 2 or delta r. Okay, 0 cross r, r plus 0 is not possible. Okay. Since A separates points from B, it follows that A x y is delta r if and only if x is y. See, points alpha, beta are not equal to, uh, are not equal to each other, then they, they, have, they are not in such delta r, right. So, when, once you have some other element, what is the other choice? It must be the whole of R2. So, this is delta R only if x is equal to y. So, now we given f belongs to Cxr for x not equal to y, what we have fx, fy, this is axy, which is the whole of R2, right. And if x is y, if x is equal to y, then fx fy is fx fx that is in delta r obviously that is the x x. So, therefore, all the points of f all the functions in f verify our condition of the lemma. So, they are inside a prime. Okay. So, that completes the proof because we have already shown that. So, I will just recall the important steps here. Okay. So, where was the definition of A prime? So, this A prime, which was obviously larger, okay. So, we have proved that A prime is equal to A. The, the description of A prime is this one we are using that for this is for all F, okay. F is in such CXR. For all pairs x y, f x f y must be x y. Then f is inside a prime. This is the simple description. Okay, so this has been exploited. Here. So stone wise trust theorem. When uh, when we are taking real variable functions, this is proved now. Okay, a slightly better version of that one has been proved here. Okay, so next time we shall do the complex case as well as some other extensions wherein we do not assume x is compact but only locally compact. Thank you.